the Pravda is that episode 54 is done. That's the truth. That is the truth. Yes. Uh, we went into some deep philosophical discussions at the end. Started talking about some technology in the beginning. Mm-hmm. Yes. That was a cool one. Elon Musk makes his memorable appearance once more. <laughs> Pravda. Cool. Yeah. Uh, merchandise. Yep. The Pravda of the merchandise can be found on uh, shop.gogafire.com. Okay. <laughs> if you want to support us, if you Pravda really want to support us, uh, hit up patreon.com slash uh, Gamers. Okay. Yeah. And uh, the Pravda is that we're about to start the show, so um, cool. Pravda. Here we go. Boom. And we are back with another episode of Scratch Gamers. This episode, Saint de Toi. What? How do you say 53? I don't know. In French? Yeah. I, don't, Dis, I, I never did it in that class. Isn't it like Dissanc Toi? Saint Toi? Saint? No, Dissanc, like 10, 5, 2? I don't know, man. Dissanc, de Trent, Trent, whatever. If you're listening to this and you're from Canada or from France, Please don't hate on us or hate on me because I don't remember grade. I didn't. I didn't do good in that class. No, I did not do. Je ne comprends pas parce que. That's all I got. Yeah. Oh no, I I, I got the uh, I don't know because. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Je stupide. Okay. Anyways, so yeah, so this is a regular weekly podcast where yes. we no we're not reviewing any movies, Netflix shows or games. We are talking strictly about five things from the week that we thought were cool mm-hmm. and deconstructing them. So first on the docket, Vish, what you got? I get license plate. Cool. License plate? Yeah. Random. So they're doing something in California. They started this. Oh, okay. Well, that was interesting. Digital license plate. No. Yeah. That's, oh, that's, that's, that's pretty what sick. I to show you. <laughs> oh, shoot. Okay. So how does it work? So digital license plate. It's a digital license plate. I, I like how we we don't tell each other what the topics are. <laughs> so then when it when it actually comes about, it's like, oh wow, that's that's actually pretty cool. So yeah. digital license plate. All right. What's so it's like a big big plate? screen on the back of your car, like uh, you put it in place where your license plate is. But why would they do that? Why would they do that? Well, why digital? Why digital? Yeah. Why yeah, not really digital? Like uh, yeah, there's a lot of ways to save money on this too. Oh, yeah, because the then you don't have to well. actually... Yeah, that makes sense, because right. you don't have to, like... But you, well, the thing is, it's a little, little expensive right now. Okay. So, so but what, 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 where you can save money is, you know how you got to get those stickers each year? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And put them on a license sure. plate? Yeah. You don't have to do that. You just register online, and it'll just show up. Yeah, on that's cool. Thing online. Oh, that's pretty cool. Right, right from online. Like, yeah. Oh, that's pretty cool. Yeah. And if they put some sort of, like, heat thing on it, because you know how, like, dirt gets on there, or, like, snow... Well, I guess California, so that won't really happen, but, yeah, you know, no. like, Canada, it's, like, dirt or snow. Well, that'll be a different thing. They'll have to figure that out. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying, like, like a heat. But you can thing. still have that now, and, it, and it'll still be on it, right? Like, here. Like, heat. license plate won't do anything different. Yeah, that's true. Oh, that's kind of cool. So, like, you're saving a little bit of money. Potentially, okay. yeah. That's pretty uh, cool. So, it's like, yeah. Uh, and then they don't have to print, like, plastic ones. Don't right? have to print anything, but, I yeah. mean, you do have to make them um, those the digital plates right 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 oh right. they can't just it kind of it can't just come like pre-installed in the car like uh into the car yeah oh right now they're not doing it like that it's a oh, separate thing you're I buying see, you see. buy it like an ipad oh okay see i thought you it screw was that like in pre- and put it there well they can the do that or whoever's doing the installation oh huh. well, that's yeah. kind of cool uh it's pretty interesting you can have like different logos or you, Ooh, you'll, like you can have a little slightly like different color uh-huh you can have ads per se like no if, it's, if it's like a car sales guy right or if it's at a dealership yeah, it'll just yeah, say yeah. like or mercedes or it'll say something right or it'll have if there's like an amber alert it'll show an amber right. alert oh, at so the sick. bottom of that yeah or or could it be like the police tap into it and they're like pull over or like this is the this is a suspect car you know what i mean like, oh yeah the, yeah exactly this car is stolen yeah yeah, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah things yeah. like that yeah you can, I think you can track your car, too, with oh, that. Oh, that's awesome. And then yeah. it could be like, uh, you know, like taxis. It's like how they press the yellow button, and then it's like, if this yellow button's flashing, call the police. Yeah. It could just be like, help, I'm being... Right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Things like that. Yeah, it makes sense. They could like a message. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's awesome. Uh, but the thing is, the price is pretty expensive. Yeah. How much are you talking uh, about? Two. So, no, 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 no. It's six ninety nine. 
six dollars ninety nine cents. Six ninety nine, six hundred ninety nine. That's pretty expensive. Dollars. That's American. Oh my god! All right. And, uh, and you're paying seven dollars a month. Oh, that's <laughs> lame. No, I can't do that. It should be built in the government. Yeah. So I think it, this is. I think they're doing. I think it's a pilot program where they've done. They've already done the pilot program, but it's slowly getting you know spread out in right. California. Oh. And testing this out so far. Yeah. Hmm. It seems kind of interesting. There's a video they put up. I think we'll post it up too. Cool. Uh, like showing the different uses for it. Mm-hmm. I thought that was a cool thing. Nice. Like you know, nice. Like uh, we've using license for a long time, but we have done nothing to to improve upon it. Right. 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 So. Well, uh, when does it come into effect? Uh, well, they're already doing it now, but uh, only like a f- couple hundred to three hundred people or so are using it. Oh, only three hundred people? Yeah. I think oh, it's so. kind of small. It's small, of course, but you know, it's a it's a big change, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it makes sense. Yeah. I think you gotta start somewhere, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. I think I think it's I think it's a good idea. We'll see what happens. No, that, that's actually really cool. Yeah. yeah, it's pretty impressive. Very like innovative. Oh yeah. It's just like the Tesla cars, you know, like everything's going like hyper digital. Yeah. Cool. I think that's yeah. all I have for that one. Yeah. All right. So Apple copycats. I know we talked about how awesome Apple is and how uh, their marketing scheme. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we, were, we were at the movie theater, me and Vish, and then I was like, oh man, I didn't know that the new Apple Watch could last four days. And you're like, wait, what are you talking about? I was like, yeah, like it said four days of like something. And then like. Yeah. Life uh, expectancy. Like the battery life. Yeah. Yeah, 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 and and then I was like, I was like, oh, um, like wh- like it must be the new Apple Watch that can last four days because mine can only last one day. So we're sitting in the theater, and then the commercial plays again. I'm like, yeah, check it out, there it is again. And you're like, yo, that's it's not Apple. It was the Fitbit. Remember? <laughs> and it was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh I man, I looked like, it up. Like that doesn't. It looks like an Apple, but it, it, it doesn't it looks, look like an Apple. It looks ad. just like an Apple. And like what threw me off is like. I should have known because they, they kept do saying ads like, like that fit. Too. Yeah. The, the 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 thing was like fit fit. Over oh, and over. you're right, and right. Like, you were saying fit. Oh, yes, I yes, should yes, have yes. thought it. I should have known it was Fitbit. You know? <laughs> but it's just a classic case of like oh, that's copycats. Funny. You know? Yeah. Yeah, that's that's pretty oh, wild that's though. Pretty... It really it really had me and like how many people you know were also fooled by that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. But it's just a testament to like how good Apple is at their marketing. Yeah, and everyone tries to copy them. Yeah, exactly. That's, that's yeah. the problem. Yeah, that's pretty cool. That's that's all I got for that one. What's your next one? Uh, so the next one, uh, Peter probably talked about it too, but I want to. No. Oh. Uh, uh, Elon Musk again. Okay. Elon Musk. We've been talking about Elon Musk for many times. So again, he's. So you haven't noticed Apple and Elon Musk are quite Tesla's. prevalent in our yeah. podcast. Yeah. Uh, Is so, that the Illuminati T-shirt? I saw like on Instagram. He like. What? No, it's not about that. Oh, it's he posted about, something, and I was like, that's pretty trolly. He's like Illuminati. Yeah, he does that a lot, yeah. Uh, I don't think I saw that one you're talking about. Oh. But um, this one is about media. Okay. okay. Uh, so there was like an article. They're, they're, like the media is disingenuous, right? They're, okay. they're there just to create things to create have clicks. And, and they're yeah. not really telling real, like a full-on... like. A journalist piece, right? Yeah, like, you know, sense. uh, like, so one of them was like, what I could remember was, um, so there's a Tesla person that got into an accident. Okay. She was in, uh, they said she was probably in like those, the self drive cars, self driving one. That makes sense. Uh, but in that accident, all she had was like a broken ankle. Oh, okay. And then what Elon posted on his Twitter was like, yeah, she got a broken ankle. But then there's every year 30,000 people die in the those those gasoline cars right yeah that's true <laughs> that not really gets mentioned right yeah for sure for sure so you so you you, you view that as oh okay so that means tesla is really bad yeah you have to get relative yeah yeah, yeah but they're sure. not explaining the whole story right like you can talk about that as a news article of course what happened with that lady mm. but then you're it's it's you, you know it's funny it's, it's misinformation for, for sure compared to something else it's it's um so i i read the book blink and Basically, it's about how we make snap decisions, and that's like a good example of it. You know, it's like we use our stereotype bias to yeah. guess on certain things, and like the media uses that that like fault in our like brain mm-hmm. thing, like well. You oh, know, now right. people are like, oh, like Teslas are bad for you, but it's like no, you didn't. You didn't actually look into it. 
You just like no. you made the snap judgment yeah. because of what was said. Yeah. Yeah. You know? So. Uh. So and then he tweeted out like, "This is why people don't trust the media anymore." That's so true. Honestly, it's like you, you know, it's sort of like short form media, like I like traditional media, which is like news and stuff. It's very like, like their their information is short form. Yeah. Right. Like I mean, like you have to get a point across in a certain amount of time, right? Mm-hmm. So like let's say twenty minutes max. But if you listen to like a podcast or you listen to like a, a, or you watch a documentary, you get like hours and hours worth of like information. So it's like you get a bigger picture yeah. as to what's going on, right? Instead of just being like – because if you watch the news, it's like, oh, this happened, this happened, this happened, right? Mm-hmm. So like a uh, good example, it's like, oh, somebody died in um, in like Morningside, right? Yeah, yeah. And then it's like, yeah, but we didn't tell you that it was a gang-related incident. We just said somebody died. Right, right. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah, like, yeah. But if they had more time, if it was like an hour-long piece, it'd be like, yeah, well, we found out this about him, this about him, this about him. And then he ended up dying, but you know, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. you would have had a bigger picture. And yeah. I feel like that's, I don't want to say like we were controlled by the media back in the day before the internet, but like, that's kind of how it seems, you know, that's why people don't trust like traditional media because mm-hmm. they don't give you the full picture. They just give you what they want you to believe. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, there were, I think it, at a time they were really good. And then I think it just, with the... You know, they're, they're not... When their morals were pure, yeah, and then they became, like, a giant conglomerate. Yeah, yeah, and then then they had to compete with, like, people like YouTube and things like that, right? For sure. Uh, so, so, basically, he just he also, like, tweeted out, like, why... That's, like, yeah, he didn't... Like, why people don't like it. Then another guy attacked him, saying, uh, you're... Just be... Like... Uh, he said, like, what... Like, he attacked him on what he was saying, and then he's like... And then you're acting like Trump. I'm like, just because someone is saying the media is fake, uh-huh. they're Trump. You know True. what I mean? Like comparing him like that. But that's not, this has been going on for a long time. And why right. do you think Trump won? Because they don't trust you anymore. For sure, for sure, for sure. Right? Yeah. So then, <laughs> uh, and then he's like, well, we should create something like, uh, like a, uh, like a source where we can see if the the journalist is true or not. Right. Like, okay. Like kind of like Rotten Tomatoes with movies. Oh, that's kind of. So cool. you see, like all oh, this. Was he serious or is he trolling? Uh, I think he was both serious and trolling. At okay. This because I think I think he's true in that aspect though, right? How do you know if this person is true or not? Like, sure. how, yeah. like ba- what's their credibility? What's their credibility? That's that's the word I was looking for. Yeah. What's their credibility? So he's like. We should create a credibility thing, and then he asked. He made his own poll on Twitter, and they're like, like eighty percent is like, yeah, we should have something like this. Interesting. And then they attacked him on that. Wow. The, the traditional <laughs> that, media, or yeah, 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 oh. yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> and then he's like suggested like we should create like a website like Pravda, What's and that? Pravda is like a word. Uh, it means like truth. Oh, in what language? Like a site. Uh, I think it's like Russian or something. Oh. Uh, it's funny to use Russian. <laughs> it's just a word for truth. Uh, been interesting if he does make anyway. So he like, like we should suggest we should make something like this and that'd be kind of like, cool. Kind of like yeah. And he even he tried to buy a Pravda. His actual website already called Pravda. Oh. And then it's it's a it's run by Russian, of course. Mm. And then, and then he's like, he couldn't do it. He couldn't buy it. Or it's Ukrainian actually, not Russian. Mm. And then he's like, why don't we? Just, well, we'll make it. He figured it out. We'll make it Pravda with the Pravda is like like D U H D U H. Yeah, yeah. Pravda. So, which is kind of funny. That is pretty. Like, funny. I wonder how far this will go, and if we do end up making something that would figure out if if that uh, journalist is uh, credible or not. That's true. That'd be pretty interesting. I think I think we do need something like this. Yeah, for sure. At he's he's time. a very innovative person. Like, I wouldn't hold it against him to create that. Just like uh, the flamethrower. Yeah. <laughs> Pravda I like that That's pretty cool Yeah So that was the thing with uh, He totally is the Tony Stark of our time <laughs> Like to do stuff like that It's like oh it's Exactly I mean Stark. I mean coming out Calling out someone like Elon Musk Who's doing so Like a lot of good stuff mm-hmm. And saying that Just because of what he's saying Oh he's like Trump That makes no sense That's yeah, very odd It's just Yeah Just disingenuous Yeah For sure For yeah. sure Yeah Yeah, yeah that's oh. what I've got Yeah that's cool I like Elon Musk He's a good guy Steve Jobs is also really cool. But if you understand him. 
if you just look sure. at the oh speaking of understanding great segue into our topic nietzsche nietzsche philosophy so i didn't read um i didn't read any of his major works yet but i read the breakdown <laughs> that's so funny it's like you you caveat it with that and they're like okay well i don't need to listen to you then <laughs> you know what i mean but all right so i read his uh it's like a synopsis on nietzsche like all of his philosophies and like the book wasn't that great it ended up being like the author was projecting more than he was actually talking about Nietzsche right because I, I was reading it and I was like you just don't understand what he's saying the mm. author but like I got what Nietzsche was saying so um, his two major philosophies from what the book has uh, explained so far yeah. I'm gonna read Beyond Good and Evil actually no there's like a few is that a game? Beyond Good and Evil was that a game? I think it Beyond was a is a game no, there's there's a it's an old game. Oh, okay. Yeah. Well, there's uh, so the three the three major um, philosophies that I took away from Nietzsche are um, good and evil. Are he said morality is based on utilitarianism. Okay. So yeah. things are only good if they are good for society as a whole. Yeah. yeah. Like you need to propagate something. So yeah. there's no such thing as morality because it changes over time. Oh yeah yeah. Right. So. Like that's I, I'm assuming that's what Beyond Good and Evil is about, where it's like he just explains mm-hmm. how, um, like it's all in your head. Yeah. Great. Right. Um, I'm remembering. Remember, I'm remembering a little bit because I did take this course. Yeah, yeah, yeah I philosophy was there. Yeah, yeah. I just didn't remember much, but you're reminding me some things. And then the the next one is the Ubermensch, which is the oh, yeah. Superman. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I think that well, before I get into these. So basically, the Superman is like the the Uberman, right? Isn't the uh, Ubermensch uh, translated literally, it's Superman. Okay. So um, it's basically a person that's like very self-aware. Uh huh. Okay. And then the final one is nihilism. Yeah. Is what they what they attributed to him as, like he's oh, like a big nihil- proponent nihilism. Like, yeah, you know, yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. So okay, so let's let's deconstruct because I totally got where he's going with mm-hmm. this. So remember how I said before, like, because I was going through that, like, phase when you realize that nothing matters, like, in a thousand years, we're all going to be dead. Right. Right. All of our actions are going to, like, Achilles said it, like, all of our actions are just going to blow away like dust in the wind or whatever, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think that's something like that in Troy. Um, and, uh, and, like, Nietzsche realized this. Yeah. Right. But what's kind of funny is he he stumbled upon nihilism when he he asked the girl that he liked to marry him, mm-hmm. and then she said no, and then it made him go into like a crazy spiral where he's like, oh my life's ruined, blah blah blah, and then he became like a nihilist, like nothing matters, all life is like sad, right? Oh, okay, okay, and then according to the book, yeah, because uh, they talked a lot about his like his like autobiography, so. Remember, uh-huh. I was going through that myself. I was like, oh, when when you realize nothing matters, what's the point of living? Because like it doesn't matter what we do anyways. And then you're like, well, that's why I play video games. Right. Right? And then, like, you just enjoy your experience. And that's where I came up with um, nihilism and acceptance are at the two ends of enlightenment, Mm -hmm. or two shades of enlightenment. How you take it is up to you. Right. Right? So, what he, what, what Nietzsche was saying is that when you realize that nothing matters, you're gonna become nihilistic. Right. Because nothing matters. But he didn't, he didn't break through which is what the tantric talks about. Like, if you're a tantric, you live the life that you want because you realize that you're going to die. Mm-hmm. Or, like, even the, the samurai will do that. You know, you're going to die anyways, live for your duty. Right. Right? So, so Nietzsche hit the nihilism, but he had no way to bring himself out of the nihilism. Yeah. He was touching upon it right. in a correct way, but then the author was like, oh, he was crazy, blah, 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 because he became a nihilist. And it's like, no, he just, <laughs> he just didn't. He was right, though. Like, yeah. true enlightenment is realizing you're going to die. You know, it's like that, like, well, not true enlightenment. There's so many, enlightenment, you get enlightenment all the time. Anything that enlightens you, like, makes you realize something is an enlightenment piece. Right. yeah. So when you're like, oh, how enlightened are you? It's just how much do you know about the world, mm-hmm. you know, and yourself. So um, in realizing that nothing matters, it's like, you really can only take it two ways. Either you accept that nothing matters and you enjoy your experience, or you just become a sad sad lonely person like Nietzsche apparently <laughs> right you know because he became a full on nihilist yeah huh. yeah alright and then okay so then his next philosophy the Ubermensch so he's saying that the basically the Ubermensch is the artist right is, is an artist if you are an artist you, you become like a superman and then people and then he's like well how can somebody be an artist 
you know how, how can it just be an artist and I'm like no no he's he's meaning I believe he's meaning that like um, not literally but more like figuratively where it's like because when you look at an artist they see the beauty of the world yeah so the ubermensch just sees the beauty of the world right right they're like they're like they, they've become the Superman mm -hmm. they've transcended the world because they understand the world from a different point of view yeah. they're not looking at it from their, their small problems mm -hmm. they're looking at it from like a bigger scale yeah and I, I believe that's what the, the that he's trying to get to yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. uh, what was my other one Ubermensch nihilism uh, I don't remember what was that um, Two Shades of Enlightenment oh that's sad <laughs> I, just, I lost my train of thought there the three topics, right, that he had? The three main things? Uh, the right? three main things that, that hit me. Uh, I think those are the... I remember, like... Oh, man, I don't remember, but... The three that you listed were the three that was in my books, too. I remember. Yes. Yeah, like, that was, like, the main... Really that's, 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 yeah, that's the main things. <laughs> what was the other one? Uh, oh, no, no. Beyond Good and Evil. Beyond oh, it was Good just and Evil. Beyond Good and yeah, Evil. Yeah, okay. yeah, Oh, okay. So, um, so, basically, what are you saying is, like... But then... So, Nietzsche... All right, so, check this out. Uh, Nietzsche said, uh, don't believe in me. You know, he said, believe in me, but, but be skeptical. Okay. And the author's like, well, how can you be believing in them, but also be skeptical? Oh, that makes no sense. So it's paradoxical. That makes total sense. Okay. I, that's what I'm saying. And I'm like, the author just didn't understand it. I'm like, no, he's saying like, you have to experience it to know. Like, yeah, he's saying it, but like, you won't really, you have to be skeptical because if you question it, you're gonna come to the point of realization that mm -hmm. he's correct. You know, it's like, it's like the Buddha because Nietzsche didn't want to be a god, right? right. He just came up with this philosophy that he realized, yeah. you know? Yeah. Which is also interesting because like, now that I read more about like the Bible, because I'm like, mm -hmm. almost, almost done the Old Testament, the thing taking me so long. Uh, almost done the <laughs> Old Testament and like listening yeah. to these things and like um, like yoga, Buddhism and all that. They're mm -hmm. just philosophers. Jesus, Buddha, uh, Krishna, these are just people with like points of view. Yeah. You know? And then people like deified them. They made them into gods. Mm -hmm. And like Nietzsche realized that. That's why Nietzsche is saying like, um, well, I believe he was saying like God is dead. But it's because you don't need the fairy tale God anymore. Right. You know, you realize that you are creating your own God. Because Nietzsche realized that everything that you, you believe comes from your own mind. Mm -hmm. That's why it's beyond good and evil, because you're making the label up. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, yeah. It, yeah. So, I, but again, these are like yogic points of view. Yeah. No, I remember those things. Yeah. I was like, I agree with him all the time when, like, when I remember in class. Like, yeah. No, but he's, like, he's it, right. <laughs> so so what Nietzsche said too is is a really intelligent person, somebody who really thinks about life and yeah. like really studies it, yeah. will come to the same conclusions as him. And how many times have we been saying the exact same things? So I'm reading the Nietzsche thing. I'm like, oh, we talked about this before. Yeah, that's that's what I, that's what I kept telling you. Like, and I'm we're, like, we're not, is, what we're talking about is not new. It's, yeah, it's, people have been talking about this for a long like time. like like literally this podcast. Like every time we say like oh like like our our question about would you kill. Uh, one person or a town yeah, yeah, yeah. and then like oh but what are the towns feel a rapist right that's a Nietzsche philosophy yeah. but he came up wait we I didn't read any Nietzsche yeah, before yeah, yeah. that I know I know but yeah. like he said if you just contemplate life you're going to come to the same conclusions <laughs> yeah. but that's why he said I'm correct but be skeptical right because like even when he tells you something you have to question it because mm -hmm. in questioning it you'll come to your own conclusion which is gonna be the same conclusion as all of us right you're just making it up in your head but the yogis said that too it's like your mind is um, like how you perceive the world is just mm -hmm. like a, a narrative, right? Yeah. But see, Nietzsche said it in a different way. Like we're all honestly like so. Um, so I'm like almost done the the Old Testament now, yeah. and like the whole beginning part was like stories, right? And I was mm -hmm. like, ah, oh, this is kind of BS. Like I don't, I don't believe in any of it. Like it's just kind of boring. It's killing me right now. Yeah. That's why it took so long. <laughs> but then we hit this. Then you hit this thing. Um, I think it's proverbs and yeah. wisdom. And all it is, is just, it's just axioms. It's just, it's so good. I'm like, I highlighted that. I'm like, these are the only things you really need to read. Ignore the beginning, all the like story, the fairy tale stuff. You don't need any of that. Right. But when you read like Proverbs and wisdom, it's just like, uh, do not trust the person who you have slighted because they might come back and kill right. you in the end. I'm yeah. like, yeah, that makes sense. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, but, but in reading it, it's like, <laughs> these are all common things. And yeah, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. and all of these Quite religions, common, 
these like philosophies mm -hmm. well they are all just philosophies all these religions all these belief systems they're yeah. just like trying to explain the world to you right but at the end of the day you got to realize that you're creating the world in your mind yeah you know that's that's the ultimate realization that it's all in your head mm -hmm. you know there is no good and evil Nietzsche is correct yeah you know like um, good example thou shalt oh it's this is what he said this is what he said the morality of the Bible yeah, um, yeah, yeah. takes away its own dogma and what he meant by that is the the old the Ten Commandments <laughs> already said thou shalt not kill and yet we kill in the name of Jesus yeah so he said he said that yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, you're yeah. you're contradicting yourself right. your morality is superseding your dogma mm -hmm. it eliminates it because we're not supposed to kill yeah. and yet you're using the dogma to kill people mm -hmm. But again, exactly. a very common thing we all thought of. That's why he's like, no, no, this is these. If you if you're intelligent enough and you're you're willing to be yeah. contemplated enough, you'll realize the same thing I realized. Yeah, you'll come to the same conclusions. Yeah. Except for he didn't have like the yoga perspective or like the the tantric perspective of like coming yeah, out of his nihilism. That's the only thing. That's where he stopped off. That's no, why I know, people yeah. are like he's a nihilist. A lot of people oh, don't right, like Nietzsche. Oh, you know, they're like, oh, he's, he's too negative. He's too fatalistic. Uh -huh. But it's like, yeah, but he is fatalist because the world is fatalistic. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's like, oh, we're all going to die. That's so negative. No, it's change, man. Uh, yeah, this People whole can't idea. accept change. That's just, all it is. They can't accept truth. Exactly. Uh, it's funny because I just posted this uh, Young Yoda thing this morning. Mm. It's funny that you just said that. Um, it's like, when staring into the sun, you better wear glasses or you might go blind. <laughs> yeah. That's what I wrote, right? And then I, I said, like, not everyone can, in the descriptive, not everyone can accept the truth. Right, because like, y some people need glasses. It's yeah. like, no, 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 yeah, g there is a God looking out for you, bro. Put on these glasses because the sun's too bright for you to actually look at. It. You know what <laughs> I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and then, like, when you're ready to accept the truth, slowly take out the glasses. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna hurt, you know. Yeah. Staring into the sun always hurts, you know. Of course. But like, if you really want to know, like, uh, honestly, I believe Nietzsche is like, uh, he's not dependent. I can't say he's he's on the right path. He just didn't finish it. He didn't come to the acceptance of like, oh, it's all a gift. His mm -hmm. his philosophy of the Ubermensch is, but he wasn't an Ubermensch. Right. You know, he believed that a person could attain a place of uh, yeah. what the yogis would call tantrics. Mm -hmm. You know, where it's like you you like realize the gift of life, which is kind of funny because it's like you could one could even say that. So like the the tantric came out of the meditator. The the yogi would initially meditate yeah. over and over right to like escape reality mm -hmm. which is kind of nihilistic right you know what i'm saying yeah and then um when you when you pass beyond the escapism of meditation yeah then they would say uh that you you've become a realized being because mm -hmm. you're meditating in life you don't need to seclude yourself away anymore you just you view life as what it really is mm -hmm. that's what tantrics believe yeah the real tantrics like okay. Okay. like not like if so like um <laughs> like uh the i forgot what the book's called it's on the website yoga spankapita or something i know that's like spankapita is like a food but the the sacred origins of the uh the sacred text of the origins of tantra yeah and it's just like a collection of um book like stories mm -hmm. or whatever like um not stories, like a collection of works that, that deconstructs, like that's where Tantra came from. Right, right. And all and all it is had nothing to do with sexual energy. It was just talking about, people like take it so far, but if you just read the very, it's like the Bhagavad Gita. People are like, oh, yoga is this, this, this. It's like, no, if you actually read the first time they talk about yoga, yoga just means meditation, right? It doesn't have anything to do with asana. Mm -hmm. Like Krishna is just like, you want to you wanna achieve yoga? Sit here and stare at the, like, your nose, right? you know? <laughs> just like the tantra it's like it had nothing to do with sexual energy it was just like just stop meditating and realize that life is in front of you mm -hmm. like they'd say like like the realized being of the tantrics would laugh at meditators so you're like you just don't get it yet it's like nihilistic people it's like yeah you just haven't accepted it yet mm -hmm. yeah it is it is fatalistic but that's why it's beautiful right it's, that's why i like the Tao, because the Tao is like you gotta look at the negative and accept the positive you know it's like it's both yeah yeah very so true go nietzsche Okay, Phyllis, that was a long, long di diatribe. I don't know. That's fine. Yeah. Uh, so, ph philosophical question, although we did talk about this before, um, is the universe made up of consciousness? 
Uh, so yeah, we did talk about it a little bit. It's just now, what is the definition of consciousness? All right, so um, I was listening to Michael Pollan on Joe Rogan. <laughs> okay. Um, Weren't he, sure his last name? <laughs> That's Pollan. Okay. Pollan. No, it's Poland, but I should know how to explain. Okay. Right, right, right. Like That's say fine. it. Um, so he was. This is the first time I ever like saw this, and I cut it up and I put it on my Instagram. Um, he he said that the whole world. All right, so consciousness. To yeah. be conscious of something, my definition of it, and if let's see if you agree, is just active awareness. Mm -hmm. If you're actively aware of something, you're conscious of it. Right. Hence consciousness. Yeah. You know. So okay. we agree on that? Yep. Okay. So uh, from there, so if we take consciousness as active awareness, how many things are aware and from what degree? Mm -hmm. So Michael Pollan said that we had we have five senses. So our reality, our awareness is directed by our five senses. Yeah. But a bee has senses that we don't have. Yes. Does that mean that it's not aware? Mm -hmm. Of course it's aware. It's able to go from plant to plant and yep. interact with the world. A dog has doesn't see color. Does that mean that they're not conscious like we're conscious? They're conscious, yeah. but like not to the same degree as us because they don't have the five senses we do. Mm -hmm. Like in terms of color, they do yeah. have five senses, but you know what I'm saying? Yes, yes, yes. So in that way... Like we also have different things that we don't see that, that like, other, other animals do see. Exactly, yeah. Right? And he was saying like even plants are conscious. Like when people are like, oh, there's... Plants aren't conscious, but a plant can tell when a bee's coming, and then it can like adapt in a way to make the bee stay longer, so it'll get more pollen or not. Mm -hmm. You know, and it's like, does that just because our metric of what consciousness is from a human perspective is not the same as a plant or a dog or like a bee? Right. Doesn't mean that they're not aware of their reality, like we're aware of our reality. Yeah. You know. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what the yogis were trying to say when they're like, like the whole world is made up of consciousness. It is because everything is aware of something. But when you take it from like that woo woo mystical yogi perspective, it's like then you start to get like scientists being like, oh, that's that's total BS. Like you guys don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. But it's like no, no, you don't. You guys don't know how to explain it correctly. Yeah. yeah. Right. You know, even the people that are saying it, it's like, do you even? It's like when people say that stuff to me, I'm like do you even know what consciousness means though like you gotta take the first step in that whole thing the whole universe is made up of consciousness right you know it's like do you know what the universe is do you know what consciousness is right you know how can you define how can you say that those are you know mm -hmm. those are connected if you don't even know what those two variables are oh uh, yeah you know what I mean yeah. like do you know that the universe is made up of atoms right you know some people don't even know that true very true. <laughs> yeah. I think I think this is the I think the Ubermensch, going back to Nietzsche, yeah. is the one who will be able to to like mix art and science. You know, to to help them realize the truth of like, okay. to become more yeah. aware of things in reality, you need to keep an open mind. Mm -hmm. and learn from everything and take what is necessary. It's like what friggin' uh, Bruce Lee said, take what is necessary, discard what is not. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's how we should live our lives. Yes. Very good point. Yes. Speaking of which, uh, though we do talk philosophical, we also love playing video games. Yeah. I so, mean, you should also have fun. Yeah. Like, but that was, that was my segue into us playing GTA soon. Oh, okay. Yeah. All right. <laughs> so, any any final thoughts? Uh, no, I just uh, you know don't take things so seriously. Why so serious? Oh, that's a good one. Yeah, I'm gonna say take things very seriously until you realize that you shouldn't take them seriously. Yeah, I'm so serious. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's the that's the thing. Right? It's two aspects of life. So. Yeah, that's true. You, you know, it's funny. Um, well, just being in like seriousness. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. When, when, uh, when I'm like, when I'm in like the throes of learning something, I mm -hmm. get very serious about it, and like, like the, like some people can't take that. You know, it's like, <laughs> why are you being so serious? But it's like, why are you not being serious? Right. Yeah. 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 I, I know what you mean. You yeah. know what I mean? It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. it's like, dude, this is like, this is a time. Like, 
you can't always that, that's why I had to counter actors you're like why so serious I'm like I'm always serious you know what I mean like no, 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 no. I, I had to balance it because it's like it's like of course, there's yeah, a time uh, and a place uh, uh, yes 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 when I do mean that yeah does it mean all the time no of course of course yeah, yeah, yeah. But, but like people look at things from the coin one sided nobody looks at the coin right. dual sided yeah. you know? and that's where we have problems it's like my point of view is correct it's like no both points of view um, best definition I ever heard about discipline is knowing what to do at the right time Mm-hmm. And I'm like, that's a great definition of discipline. Right. Because sometimes you have to be silly, sometimes you have to be serious. Yeah. But you have no win. True. Yeah. So till next week. Yes. We got uh, another weekly roundup. No movies, right? Oh, no. Uh, you want to see Ocean's 8? No. Such an ass man. These women's rights stuff. To <laughs> 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 an SJW movie. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Maybe. All right, so next week we're either going to do a weekly roundup of a movie or do five more topics. Yeah, we'll see. Although we had that one cool topic about um, black markets. Oh, yes, yeah. So that would be kind of cool. Possible. Yeah, stay tuned for our... Yeah, there's a lot of stuff happening next week, too. Uh, It's the WWDC. Oh, all right. So I might might bring something from that. Okay, so maybe we'll just do a weekly roundup. We won't do a movie review. We'll see. We'll maybe do a quick one. Oh, okay, like like, like we did. All right, so it would be like one of our topics. That's cool. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, we're also going to check out Banksy, the Banksy exhibit, June 16th. So maybe we'll do our, our weekly roundup the Sunday so we can talk about the Banksy exhibit. Sure. That'd be kind of cool. All right, cool. So stay tuned for our GTA 5 live sessions yes. coming in a bit. Yes. A lot of cool stuff happening. Yeah. All right, take it easy. Peace. Bye-bye.